Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. And in today's episode, we're going to be continuing on as we always do through the week with our VGC Series 8 content, playing today a team based all around Calyrex Shadow Rider. It's something very familiar to us. We featured it in the very first week of the Series 8 kicking in. We're coming back to it now. And this team have featured on stream a couple of times and I've made a few tweaks to it since then but it is something i've been playing around with probably more than anything else in this format and it's taken me a while to actually get it up onto an episode today but we're going to be throwing up a rental code at the end of the episode as we always do so stick around for that and there will be a poker piss down in the description below but we do have the inclusion of stack attacker in this team which gives us a really nice trick room option especially if trick room is a way for my opponent to kind of counteract the faster things on our team and uh, it just helps us a bunch in having that really fast offensive mod and the really slow offensive mod. So if the trick room does go up, we got ways around it because that was one of the things that I found most difficult about the team uh, in general was Thunderous opposing uh, Solfus Thunderous was really difficult to deal with. And you know, with something like Stack Attack, especially with the support from Ndidi, you can get that seamless trick room support up and then start doing a lot of work and disrupting the flow of your opponent's kind of uh, game plan. So there is the team. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. As always, we'll have a couple of games of the team now. We'll talk through it, see how it matches up against some hopefully good archetypes that we come up against today, and then we'll end up with that rental team. So without further ado, let's get into the first game of today. Okay, first up today, we have a Lapras, Incineroar, Reggie Alecki, Zacian, Colossal, and Dragonite team. So it looks pretty scary on the face of it, especially when we're in a best of one situation. But we know what kind of combinations are going to come out. You've got the Dragonite with the Colossal combination there to proc the Steam Engine, get the dra the Colossal kind of boosted up. And obviously with um, probably Safety Goggles and Inner Focus, you're not going to be able to really prevent that without redirection of our own. But we do have that in, in DD. Um, uh, what am I looking at? What am I going to really go with here? Because ideally I want the DD to kind of lead, but I also want something like Thunderous that can take advantage of the Reggie Alecki that's probably going to come out um, up top to disrupt our speed with Calyrex, you know? Um, I think we've got Ndidi Calyrex. And then we'll go Thunderous. And we definitely need Incineroar in this one, I think. Just because... Uh, I don't know, like, Stack Attacker could be really good in this one as well. I think, like, Stacker, maybe, actually, that's what we're going to do. I think we go... Am I going to run out of time? Stacker, Calyrex, and we'll go Incineroar. Yeah, I think we go for our Trick Room mode here. Uh, because you look at the face of it, like, my opponent's team, like, in a Trick Room, doesn't really face or fare too well against, like, the Stack Attacker. Zassian can do good things against it but we do have the incineral support to kind of help us in the redirection as well and then the end game comes down to having something like calyrex to come in and just clean up at the end and hopefully by that point we've got rid of the regulecki so something to kind of keep in mind for later in this game okay well we got indudu and a stacks coming out now what does my opponent do i think you probably get your screens up and get zassian onto the field um I don't know if you're Electroweb. Don't think so. But I think we just follow me and uh, Trick Room. Follow me and Trick Room. Now, indeed, you should be able to take a double up here. Depending on what the Regieleki does, depending on its item, of course. If it's like Magnet or Life Orb, Thunderbolt, plus a Max... Guys, uh, the Max guys, it will take us down. Now, it'd be nice to have the Ndidi kind of kicking around for the next turn, of course, because that re like the redirection support is, is so useful. It just gives Stack Attacker a little bit uh, more room to kind of perform as you kind of want it to. But uh, Lapras maxing, as we suspect, because it is the uh, the old Lapdog team, isn't it? Let's see what you go for. Maybe a Volt Switch. Yeah, and I reckon Zassian's going to come in on that slot. Like 100% Zassian comes in there. No way it doesn't. But if indeed he goes down here, it's not the end of the world because then we get Incineroar onto the field. Um, and then we've got a few more options where we can, you know, 
kind of pressure, the Zassi in a little bit more. Um, the Reggie Alecki is the big problem though, like I outlined at the very start of this match before we got into it. For the end game situation, for us to kind of, kind of come out uh, on top, we kind of need to have Calyrex free of Reggie Alecki to kind of come in and just be able to click that Astro Barrage button and just kind of clear the field. Okay, we are going to see a Max Geyser here. Maybe we take this. Maybe not. Oh well. <sighs> At least we know three of the four Pokemon as well on my opponent's side. You know, there's the Incineroar. We can nuke this next turn. And because there's no screens up yet from this Lapras. There's no screens up. We do have Fake Out that we can take advantage of. We do have Potting Shot as well. We don't really have the option to bring in Calyrex just yet. But we can definitely get... Did we see a max guard though? That's the that's the problem. Now with the psychic terrain up as well, we can't really utilize our fake out support. But we could I think we go parting shot into the Lapras, in all honesty, and go max rockfall. Into into Incinero. Will it be enough though? Will it be enough? To get it. We need to change the weather though, that's the thing. Okay, Zassi ain't gonna come in here for sure. That's oh, Regilecki. Okay, well that 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 doesn't that's not too bad. Okay, that's not too bad. I wonder if they go Max Geyser again. That's the other thing. Like you've got to you've got to wonder what your my opponent goes for here. Do they go for the Max Geyser to uh, kind of keep weather control, or do they go for um, the Aurora Veil Max move? Can never remember off the top of my head what it's called, but we know you know what I mean. So Rockfall, I think my opponent's playing the game where they're just going to try and cycle Intimidate onto us. But the nice thing is, like I say, we get rid of that Regieleki, which is um, maybe not, though, because if they go Geyser here, then it gets a little more tricky, doesn't it? Because they're going to be able to stick around a bit longer. Let's see what they go for. I would say they go Geyser, you know? I mean, that's that would be my bet, guys. That would be the bet. But we'll see. We'll see, the Incineroar is another big threat that we need to con kind of consider taking care of uh, sooner rather than later as well. Because with Calyrex in the back, uh, it makes things way more difficult. Again, we're seeing a uh, guys. Uh, Calyrex taking that pretty comfortably. Um, Can we take another one though? I think we can just about take another one and get the Astro Barrage off. It's just whether or not we see the Incineroar switch in, which is kind of the kind of the thing. Like we're getting greedy. Then I think we'd lose Calyrex. I think we need to get Incineroar in, and I think we need to go Rockfall. It's so whether I go Rockfall into Reggie Alecki, expecting like the Incineroar to come in there. Which I kind of do, but at the same time, I, I would like to get damage onto the Lapras as well, but we might be better. Let's go for the Lapras. Let's go for the Lapras. Kind of tempted to go because I think Incineroar comes back in there, but maybe not as well. See, does the Reggie like you just protect? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it works out better for us because it'll go down to the sand chip. This next turn, and I know the guys is going to be going up regardless because they're going to kind of supersede us. But this damage into Lapras right now is is really really useful, like really useful, because it puts it closer to going down to. Um, yeah, they have to go for the resonance here as well. That's the other thing. If they want the screen support, they have to go for that resonance. Um, which is way better for us, you know. Because we can go for another parting shot the next turn. And we kind of keep the sand on the field, which is which is ideal. Um, and now the Incineroar will come back in, for sure. The Incineroar definitely comes back in. Just because it's got that Intimidate support, which helps out a bunch. 
And how many turns of Trick Room have we got left? How many turns? But you've got to expect the Zacian to be the one Pokemon in the back. Which makes me think I need to get Incy off the field. Now. To be, yeah, I've got to get Incy off the field to have like that Calyrex Incineroar kind of combination on the field at the same time. Um, right. Psychic terrain still up for two turns. Trick room, two turns left. All right. Well, I wonder if it's better just to stay in and, and snarl for a turn here rather than switch out and kind of risk. Oh, we've got one more turn of our max left as well. I forget about this. Okay. And I'm not too worried about the Lapras yet. I think I've got to concentrate a bit more down into Incineral. Yeah. Okay. I didn't think we had one more turn left, but we do. That's uh, that's ideal. I'm probably going to see a parting shot from the Incineral here, I think. Uh, we do nothing on minus two. That's the, that's the issue. Parting shot coming out. Uh, yeah, which is expected. Um... We'll get a snarl off. And with this last turn, we're going to have to pit. Hmm. It's difficult to kind of pivot out with Incineroar here because I think the problem is... Yeah, Zacian. Zacian. We need to intimidate the Zacian. What do we do we need to intimidate the Zacian? It kind of is in a position where it needs to potentially protect this next turn almost, you know? Hydro Pump coming out. Uh, into NC. But we'll take this. Mm, I mean, not super well, to be honest. Not super well at all. Maybe better just going for the Lapras there, to be honest. Getting rid of it so the NC is a bit more fresher going into this next turn. Uh, the Zacian has to protect. It has to protect. Has to. Has to protect. Let's rock slide. It should be enough. I'm hoping that we see a protect on the Zacian and the Lapras maybe switch out to Incineroar. Just to stall out this last turn of Trick Room. I've got to hope that a rock slide's enough to get the Lapras though. Let's see. Yeah, Lapras going out. Incy coming in. And Zacian protecting. That's what we want to see. Yeah, it's tricky. It is tricky. Yeah, there's a protect. Okay, so we kind of get this turn how we need it to go. Got a bit of rock slide damage onto the, the incinero. I'm not going to do very much, though. But any damage is good damage because now we've got the ability to um, switch in incinero. We probably want to protect Calyrex this turn as well. Um... Yeah, because we're not going to be able to... Huh. It's still tricky because we kind of need to be able to get Incineroar onto the field. The other option is... Ah, uh, no, we need to... Yeah, we need Incineroar out onto the field. It's just if we see the Zacian attack, I'd imagine it probably goes after the Stacker and goes Sacred Sword, so we lose Incineroar. This is why maybe... Getting rid of the Lapras earlier on would have been the better call because then Incineroar probably would have been able to stick around a turn longer than it is now. So the foresight there that we were kind of not really utilizing was uh, not ideal. Behemoth Blade, are we able to take that? I don't know if we'll be able to take this, you know. No, dang. Okay, not ideal, not ideal. Flare Blitz, okay, well, we've got a couple of options. Because we can Trick Room. It's just whether or not a Mud Shot would be enough to get the Zacian. Because the Sacred Sword's going to get Stacker. You know?
And Mudshot's not going to get Zacian from this range. And Astral Barrage is probably our best in a Trick Room, I think. There's no way Mudshot gets Zacian from this range. If we can get this off, if we can, maybe the, the better thing would have been picking up the knockout onto the Incinero or maybe going Mudshot here, you know? Yeah, it's no way. No way. And we'll go down to a Flare Blitz, Sacred Sword, plus combat even. To where Shucker Berry would have been a better option as well, maybe, than Shucker, you know? A uh, Chopper Berry. Uh, this is a tricky one, tricky one, yeah, and we've not kind of come out on top of this. I mean, it's been a really difficult match for us, uh, but it's sometimes how it goes, isn't it, you know? Hmm. I think our biggest downfall, our biggest downfall in general was uh, not not getting rid of the Lapras when we, uh, we had the opportunity to. I think taking that heavy damage from even like minus, what was it, minus three at the time? Geyser or Hydro Pump, whatever it was, uh, really kind of put us in a bad position. So that hindsight there really cost us. Uh, so thing is, losing sometimes is not like the worst thing in the world because it gives you the foresight to see, right, well, well, that's the play I made. That's where we went wrong. Like we need to have a bit more foresight in future because the, the, the Incineroar on that match was so important to us as well as the Calyrex as well, to be honest. We let that take far too much damage and we couldn't really... Get that dominant board position in the end game where we had Incineral Calyrex out and we needed them both to be pretty healthy to be able to take at least an attack from the Zacian and be able to to really pressure it where we couldn't and then the Zacian kind of comes into its own in that that mode and that's why the Lapdog team works so well because Lapras does so well at being able to kind of disrupt early on and then we fall a bit short in the end but like I say the loss isn't really like something to look on as a bad thing it's a good thing it's a good thing we're getting really lots of information here to improve ourselves as players going forward and that's i think one thing to translate across to you guys is that sometimes a loss feels like it's the worst thing in the world but really it's a tool that you can kind of flip and use to your own advantage to better yourself and look at scenarios where oh, i keep doing that that's why i keep losing that match and things like that so just a, a tip for you going forward anyway. Hopefully it's useful and information. Right. With that, we're not going to tilt. We're not going to get on the, the 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 down kind of the, the sad step. And we're going to keep moving, be positive, And we're going to pick up a win in our next one. Okay. So let's get into our next opponent of the episode. Okay. Up next today, we have a team of Urshifu, Groudon, Meowstic, Venusaur, Lapras, and Regieleki. So another Lapras here. Um, but this time paired up with the Groudon. So you've got kind of a conflict between... The water typing and the, uh, obviously the rain and the sun. Uh, got that Venusaur, which is difficult to deal with for sure. Uh, okay, the Groudon's not the best matchup for Thunderous, but Thunderous kind of matches up pretty well here, other than the Lapras. Um, again, you could say Stack Attacker has a good matchup, but then against the Groudon, it just falls really flat. Um, there is a trick room mod there with the uh, the meow stick, so we need to be very mindful of that. Um, and if we do see the Venusaur lead, there's always the possibility that my opponent uh, has sleep powder there. I think it will go Thunderous and Incineroar. I think we'll go Calyrex in the back and I think Urshifu overall as our last one's probably a better option. We could go on Didi as well as a lead here. Just to kind of get around the sleep powder from the Venusaur. Uh, it supports Thunderous a little bit better as well. Uh, but it would mean dropping probably Urshifu here. Uh, which could be quite useful in the late game. Especially with the kind of priority sucker punches against stuff like uh, Regieleki and Venusaur. The sun is up. So we'll go with this. We'll see what we can do with Thunderous here. <sighs> and hopefully get a win. Because that's what we need. A win in this episode. Even though I talk about the importance of a loss, it's always nice to be able to kind of show the team winning as well, you know? Sometimes it's not always possible in these episodes because obviously you go up against better opponents, better teams, teams that give you a lot of issues, but that's the road, the path. That's the path to success. You need to lose to be able to better yourself, to realize where you're falling down, where your mistakes are, and then you can pick yourself up and move forward and progress. So... I know it's a bit of a, a, a kind of a um, 
the uh, the lecture, but it's not really. It's just important information to not get tied up and, and really bogged down by losing because losing is not. Unless you're in a tournament, it's not really like a big deal. And even if you're in a tournament, it's still not a big deal. Okay, we got Meowstic and Groudon out for my opponent. So I wonder if we're going to see a Trick Room. I imagine we probably do here. Makes me want to kind of switch things up a little bit. But um, hmm. I don't know if I want to... I think we could parting shot out into the, the ground and put it down to minus two. It would be kind of nice to be able to do that in all honesty and just go for an airstream into the Meowstic. doesn't make much sense, but at the same time, the plus one speed would then allow us to parting shot into the ground. The only issue would be here if Meowstic goes for a fake out into Incineroar and we see a Presbyterian Blades and that would be not ideal because then Incineroar again takes way too much damage. But we need to start trying to chip away at this Meow Stick because it is going to be the big thing that kind of threatens us going forward. And I'd imagine the Meow Stick probably wants a Trick Room here more than anything else. No. It goes Fake Out into Thunderous. Boo, boo, boo. Don't Fake Out the Dynamax Pokemon. It's not the way to play. And now it makes it difficult for my opponent to actually utilize... Um, their trick room because the myastic prone to going down this next turn we put the ground on down minus two and if it goes for sword stance which it's likely to do here then we can at least bring in Cineral back in the next turn and kind of mitigate that completely we'll bring Urshifu in I don't really want to bring Calyrex in just yet I mean Calyrex probably would have been the best thing to bring in here because then we can just spam Astral Barrage but Urshifu is going to be able to take a Precipice Blades a lot better and I really value Calyrex staying as healthy as possible um, for the late game. Uh, I think we got Airstream again. Do we now get in Calyrex? Yeah, let's get Calyrex in now. It would have made more sense. It would have made more sense to get it in that last turn. And this is another thing where we're like, I'm really not playing as openly as I probably could be. Thinking about maybe being a bit more defensive than actually offensive in that situation, where to be on the front foot and stay on the front foot, we bring Calyrex in there, and then we can really start. Like we can get rid of the Meow Stick and then concentrate down onto the Groudon as well. You know, and double into that rather than. Having to make another switch here, we broke the Sash and the Urshifu for no reason, and then we're kind of bringing in Calyrex and just kind of wasting... Ooh, Magic Room, huh. An interesting one. No items for the next five turns. Mm. No Life Orb or Assault Vest on our, uh, on our Calyrex or our Thunderous. Okay, but the speed boost here onto Calyrex is useful. Rock Slide coming out. Okay, so it's a better option. Urshifu would have been better staying in there. The critical hit is not ideal at all, like, by any means, you know? Uh, minus two. We would have just been tickled, but that is not the case. Crits happen, uh, and Lapras coming in. Okay, well... Do we lightning? Do we lightning? I think we go for max lightning for sure. And we'll just go... How's this... This, this magic room. Okay. Yeah, and I think we go for an astral barrage. Just to get damage onto the Groudon, primarily. Uh, okay, Groudon switching out. Whatever comes in. Oh, Urshifu. Okay. <sighs> Lapras going to max. Let's max resonance up. Thing is with Urshifu as well, it hasn't got the ability, it hasn't got its sash anymore, you know? I know we haven't got a life orb, but no items at all. The Lapras is going to take a massive chunk of damage from this as well. I think the thing to kind of keep in mind as well, you know, the Groudon would probably be better off trying to keep Calyrex for the late game to deal with the Groudon. Thunderous isn't going to be the best option to, to, to kind of help deal with it, you know? Emax Resonance coming out. Fine. Take a hefty amount of damage for that. 
There's, yeah, I think, well, we definitely need to get uh, Calyrex off the field now. We need to deal with the Urshifu. Um, but a superpower should get it. And I'm kind of happy if that's what we see. Uh, Incineroar is a decent switch in here. And we'll keep the Calyrex to deal with the Groudon, because I think that's more important than anything, really, at this stage. Because Groudon otherwise kind of walls out Incineroar, Urshifu, and obviously Thunderous. But I'd imagine Thunderous to maybe go down here. We just got to get... Well, like, this is why, you know, Incineroar is a good switch in here, because a Sucker Punch... Not on minus one, probably gets under us, but I think minus one sucker punch we probably are able to take, and then the superpower should be enough to kind of get rid of it. Even behind, um, behind the screens, yeah, probably, yeah, it should be four times a week. So, no sucker punch coming out though, and we are oh, we're not able to get it. Okay, it does survive. Wow, wow, I'm surprised about that. I am very surprised about that. Close combat, not ideal. In the slight, it's going to proc our... Oh, no, we don't even have access to our berries here because of the uh, the magic room. And another resonance, which will come down and take care of Thunderous. Wow. Okay. Not ideal. I think we've got to keep Calyrex to last. I think we've got to get rid of this Urshifu right now. If we can. I don't know if we're going to be able to. Uh, I think Urshifu is kind of safe here to close combat. Probably Wicked Blow is the best option. And then Fake Out. <laughs> They're just going to protect, though, aren't they? They're just going to protect. It's like, what do we do? Do we go for a parting shot into the lap? But probably not. Nah, let's just, let's just Fake Out. I mean, we're probably going to lose. Yeah. And a Wicked Blow is not going to be enough to get the Lapras here. We got Geyser? No Resonance again. Got to be into Urshifu. Going to be enough? No, not quite. Sun fades. Oh well. Comes down to a bit of a speed tie really, doesn't it? Like, our main priority is just getting rid of the opposing Urshifu. Can we sucker punch it? Kind of risky. It is risky, like, in all honesty. <laughs> but they sucker punch us, I think. You know? Uh, and let's flare blitz, just in case we win the speed tie with the Lapras. I don't see that we will, but... We get the Sucker Punch. Okay, so we get rid of the Urshifu. We can get rid of the Lapras here, you know. That'd be huge. If they attack into Urshifu, I don't think they do, though. Now they go into uh, Incineroar. But this is, a, this is all right, because now we've got the opportunity to double up into uh, the Groudon. Uh, you know, and we've got a Life Orb back. They've got their screens, which makes... Makes it a bit more tricky. But how many turns have they got the screens for? They got two turns left of their screens, I think. Probably just enough to kind of get them through the, the rest of this game, isn't it? Mm. Let's see. Let's see. Full health Groudon's not what we want to see. Auroraville wears off the next turn, so we need to. Yeah, we need to double protect here. And then Astral Barrage and a Wicked Blow. Might be enough to get the Groudon. Maybe. I don't think it will, though. I really don't. I think Groudon's just going to be a bit too bulky to take the double up. Precipice Blades. And what's the Lapras going to do? Body Press. Nice. Yeah, it's a nice option, for sure. Royal Veil wears off. Electric Terrain disappearing. And our items are all back. So, yeah. Got to just go for it. Wicked Blow. And Astro Barrage. And let's just hope it is enough to get the Groudon. Let's just hope it is. If they make a mistake and then protect, like, Groudon here, I think then, then we get it 100%, like, single target. But they haven't. 
Oh, Wicked Blast should be more than enough. Okay, with that Life Orb damage, that's more than enough. It's just a little bit unsure, you know. Um, but Wicked Blast should get the crowd on here. Without the Aurora Veil support. Okay, we get a win, which is nice. Okay, it kind of pulls around the episode. So 1-1 uh, rather than two losses, because it's always bad. It's never the way I want to kickstart an episode, you know, with a loss. And I could easily scrub that episode and come with something else. But I think there's some valuable points in there for you as viewers, especially some of the newer players coming into the tournament, and even more experienced ones, to take uh, a positive outlook on a loss rather than a, a, a bad outlook on it, you know. So that's, that's why it's there. Um, but very good game to my opponent, and we'll hop across and get you all the uh, rental team for today's team. Okay, friends, here is the rental code for today's team of the Shadow Color X. So I hope you enjoy it if you try it out. It is a lot of fun, the team. I think it's got some nice modes too. It's got the Trick Room mode. It's got the Fast mode with the Thunderous Color X. Um, and it's just a little extension on that very first team that we used in Series 8 in that very first week to where it is now. Obviously, haven't got the Hatterene in there. We've got a bit more stability with the Stack Attacker. And still going with the Indeedy, which I, I believe does provide a, a really pivotal role in the team when you do need it. Let me know down in the comment section if you do try the team out. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, at the end of the day, hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I hope you found some value in some of the things that we've been talking about, especially in regards to losses and what we take from those and things like that, just to progress as players, because that's what we're always looking to do, you know? Um, and if you have, then mission accomplished. So that is the baseline of it. But I'm going to wrap it up there, friends, because I don't want to drag this on too long. We've had two really good games today, interesting games and valuable games i think so that's all you can ask for in some of these episodes hope you enjoy the team have a great rest of your day and above all else take care of yourselves and i'll see you all for another episode very soon so until then take care and bye bye